14 Kafkaesque and macabre villains of the Hellboy universe, most demonic rogues gallery. The Hellboy comic strip is a pioneer in terms of the quality content on offer, with creator Mike Magnola keeping up the great work for over 25 years. One of the most attractive features of the Hellboy universe is the presence of some strange and eerie creatures. These monsters were created with care, and Magnola worked alongside his collaborators to make them as real as possible. Guide you, and I will awaken it. Hellboy! Hellboy! <laughs> The art of drawing up such fascinating villainous monstrosities was to create a three-dimensional representation. They were not mindless beasts, but completely sentient. Some of these monsters are merely victims of circumstances that turn them that way, while others are pure evil and will not get much sympathy from readers. In this video, we've assembled the meanest of the villains from the Hellboy universe, and their notorious deeds are sure to entertain you. Before we go into our list, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. The Agdru Jihad a very strong inspiration for those trying to create a new monster are the works of H.P. Lovecraft. Many are of the opinion that the Agdru Jihad drew from the Cthulhu mythos as well as Egyptian and Babylonian influences. These creatures are somewhat crustacean or serpentine in nature and are absolutely ruthless. Their appearance has been described as so very terrifying that the mere sight might lead to insanity. They are keen on devastation and are determined to destroy the world. The Agdru Jihad first appeared in the comic strip titled Hellboy Seed of Destruction. The Agdru Jihad are often referred to as the Dragons of Revelation, having spawned immediately following the creation of the Earth. The right hand of doom imprisoned them, but they had already given birth to 369 offsprings or the Ogdru Hem. The Ogdru Jihad were created by a greater spirit named Anum, who crafted them from fire and mud. However, when they were trapped in the prisons of Crystal, Anum was punished for his creation. These are the main antagonists in the Hellboy universe, having been freed multiple times by such villains as Rasputin. No! No! Grigori Rasputin If you consider an archenemy for Hellboy, it has to be Grigori Rasputin. He has featured in several Hellboy storylines starting from Hellboy's Seat of Destruction and has been an intriguing character for the fans. During the Second World War, he planned to use the Nazis as a means of destroying the world and introduced a project named Ragnarok. I will open a portal and awaken the Ogdru Jihad. However, he was aware that the Nazis would eventually lose and only planned to get his hands on their valuable resources that would help his cause. The only miscalculated mistake from Rasputin was that he ended up having Hellboy as his opponent in the hands of the Allies. Rasputin took refuge in the secret shelter in Norway and summoned Sudra Hem, which was a monstrous form of the Agdru Jihad. Much later, in 1994, an expedition group managed to awaken the meditating Rasputin, and he immediately conspired to have the Agdru Jihad released. However, his plot doesn't work, and he is soon incinerated by flames, leaving him physically destroyed. In the story arc titled Hellboy Wake the Devil, he reappeared as a ghost that planned to restore the notorious vampire Vladimir Glue Rescue to life. In this plot, he even meets Baba Yaga, and we see him attempting to attain the status of a god. He was also an integral part of Hellboy Conqueror Worm and Darkness Calls, and his antics will be remembered by Hellboy fans for times to come. Lady, I was gonna cut you some slack because you're a major mythological figure, but that, that's crazy talk. Now leave me alone! Hecate. This Hellboy villain was inspired by the Greek goddess of magic and symbolized the oncoming apocalypse. She is the goddess of witches and also goes by titles like Queen of Dogs and Gorgon Eyes. Ever since she made her appearance in Hellboy stories, there hasn't been much detail about her origins. Damn. <laughs> 
However, in the second epilogue of Darkness Calls, we get an insight. We learn that Hecate was born from shadows and lived with serpents and birds of prey. She grew up on a diet of blood and was unbelievably beautiful. She has been living from the times of the Golden People or the Hyperboreans and seduced their king to get access to their secret garden. She wanted to kill the angels held captive there and drink their blood. When the king learned about her treacherous ways, he cursed her to be transformed into a shape that would reflect her true self. This made her lower body like that of a snake and her whole skin scaly. The sunlight was a deadly element for her, and since then, she lurked about in the shadows. However, she still had the knowledge from the angels and created many deadly creatures to trouble mankind. <laughs> This goddess of darkness has several temples dedicated to her, and she has been a recurring character in the Hellboy series. She first appeared in the story Wake of the Devil and even featured in the animated movie titled Hellboy Blood and Iron. Sadu Hem one of the 369 offsprings of Ogdru Jahad, Sadu Hem was destroyed by the Watcher Angels shortly after he spawned. However, he was reborn during the fall of Hyperborea. This powerful creature was trapped in the earth to ensure that the Ogdru Jahad never lost their foothold, and Rasputin discovered his true powers in the Gorinium Temple. The expedition party that awakened them was devoured, and the leader of the expedition was allowed to return to the U.S. Sadu Hem stands out as one of the most vicious monsters in the Hellboy universe with his snapping claws and grotesque tentacle mass. <laughs> He was supposed to be the conduit between the Agdru Jahad and Rasputin, but when the latter was speared to death, Sadu Hem's existence was short-lived. He was later resurrected briefly by Grigori Rasputin when he came back to life. Sadu Hem also featured in the Plague of Frogs and managed to transform an entire town into vicious frog-like monsters. Among several other powers, Sadu Hem could change his shape into anything that suited his purpose. We have reason to believe that the character was inspired by the Cthulhu mythos of H.P. Lovecraft. Cronin Cronin is not as big a character in the comic books as he is in the movie version by Guillermo del Toro. In the comics, Mike Mignola made him a simple Nazi scientist associated with the SS. He was always seen in a gas mask because his face was disfigured and hardly enough is known about his background. The movie version, however, gave him a detailed biography, and he became one of the major supervillains in the narrative. Initially, he was a mere accomplice of Grigori Rasputin and helped him in his plans of destroying the world. When Rasputin died, Cronin tried to bring him back from the dead but failed. We know Cronin as the scientist who tried to conquer death, and he was one of the crucial scientists working for the Ragnarok Project. He tried to put together an unstoppable army for the Nazis, but it did not materialize. Besides his conventional weapons, he has an array of daggers strapped to his suit, and the movie version brings out the best of this evil genius. Baba Yaga we have already mentioned how the folklore of various countries inspired the villains in the Hellboy universe. Baba Yaga is one such character, based off the Slavic folklore about a witch that lived in a chicken leg house and counted fingers of dead men. This iconic character was first featured in the Hellboy universe when Hellboy was investigating a mysterious case of missing children and tracked them back to Baba Yaga. It turned out that the Baba Yaga was kidnapping the children to satisfy her cannibalistic hunger. Hellboy spotted her in a cemetery, counting the fingers of the corpses, and launched a sudden attack. Her left eye got shot out of the sockets, and even though she fought back, Hellboy got the better of her. However, even in her loss, she cursed the village with no spring for the year and babies being born with one blind eye. The loss at the hands of Hellboy decreased her powers, and Baba Yaga started living in a small dimension created like ancient Russia. She could still return to the real world if the need came up. She later appeared in the Wake of the Devil story arc and also in the series titled Conqueror Worm. 
Her interactions with Rasputin were fascinating, and she once again faced Hellboy in the Storm and the Fury. On this occasion, she offered him help to reach the Tower of Numue on the condition that Hellboy would have to give her his eye for the one he took earlier. Her use of magic makes her lethal, and she can travel great distances in her wooden mortar. In her dimension, she commands the Army of the Dead, and even after losing her eye to Hellboy, she remained a formidable foe. The Crooked Man the Devil's very own minion seems like an appropriate villain in the Hellboy universe, and the Crooked Man is precisely that. He is a twisted, evil man who was one of the selfish war profiteers during the 18th century. He was killed for his crimes, but came back from Hell to wreak havoc once again. Mike Mignola created a brief series keeping the character in the mix of things, first published in July 2008. The story traces the journey of Hellboy around the Appalachian Mountains when he meets a native named Tom Farrell. Tom possesses a magical witch bone that has gotten him through enough trouble and kept him safe. Hellboy and Tom carry the corpse of the latter's dead father up the mountains in a region dominated by the notorious Crooked Man. We learn that the Crooked Man was after the magical bone, and Hellboy planned to finish him off. Accordingly, they went looking for him with a shovel spade infused with the Holy Spirit. They give Tom's father a proper burial and also ensured that the Crooked Man disappeared for good. However, during his short presence, he was a mean and manipulative demon that even tried to convince Hellboy that everyone he knew was of a demonic origin. His spells and magical powers were unparalleled, and Hellboy had to put his best foot forward to get the better of him. I know you. Is that a harm? Fucking let me go! Gruagok. Down Shi is one of the most revengeful enemies of Hellboy, and Gruagok is one of his fairy forms. He resembles a giant, stunted, anthropomorphic boar and holds Hellboy responsible for his condition. He was a proud monster that wanted to live with pride and not under the shadow of the human race. He was previously a mighty shape-shifting warrior and later on became the Down Shi. He had been a part of the battle against the giants and participated in combat as a hulking monster, achieving a heroic status. He was in love with a human girl who was keen to see him in the form that he fought in the battle. Gruagok was worried that transforming into such a thing would spook her but obliged. She was intimidated as expected, and he soon changed into a songbird to calm her nerves. As luck would have it, just at that moment a cat jumped out and he was trapped in a misty dimension in a state of limbo. He did make his way back to the Earth, but with severely depleted powers. In the story arc The Corpse, Hellboy is looking for a kidnapped baby and faces his enemy Gruagok one more time. He sought the help from Jenny Greenteeth, the river hag, and got hold of the boar-headed humanoid called the Grom. Hellboy defeated him using a holy relic and rescued the baby from Down Shi. Gruagok has enjoyed recurring occurrences in Hellboy stories since then, always being a mighty tough opponent for him. Astroth Astroth was a demon who was also the Grand Duke of Hell and was among the oldest enemies of Hellboy. He was, however, his own paternal uncle, and this charismatic demon was an expert at tempting and manipulating his prey. He was always trying to transform Hellboy into a beast of the apocalypse, but never succeeded in his sinister plans. Astroth ruled Hell when Satan slept, and his brother Azale was frozen for trying to graft the right hand of doom onto his son Hellboy. Astroth repeatedly appears and tries to remind Hellboy about his fate, but never convinces him to go back to Hell and participate in his cause. After realizing that Hellboy would have to be killed and forcefully dragged, he helped Gruagog, the dreaded fairy, to resurrect Nimue. Astroth hoped that Nimue would put an end to Hellboy, and Nimue did summon a huge army to invade England. They fought in a gritty battle where both parties faced death and damnation. Astroth's wishes were partially fulfilled as Hellboy was in the underworld, but he never came under his control. He was finally devoured by the serpent Leviathan, and following his death, there was absolute chaos in Hell. We were in love with the demonic appearance of Astroth, and the wing and horned humanoid was as scary as he was powerful. Katha Hem We have already elaborated on the Ogdru Hem, the children of the Ogdru Jihad. Katha Hem was among the 369 Ogdru Hem and was probably the most powerful among the lot. A sign that the world would start to change, this giant monster was almost like a mountain and was summoned through some occult rituals. 
He often looked like a gargantuan, tentacled tree with a tripod of spidery legs. To give you a brief hint about the powers of this creature, the American artillery did no damage to him. Any humans who dared to step close were turned into monsters by a green gas that was being emitted from his body. It almost drove the U.S. president to the point where he was considering a nuclear strike. However, the need did not arise because Liz Sherman was successful in burning Kafahem into ashes. Kafahem used an ancient artifact that helped multiply his powers a thousand times, and with his demise, the Plague of Frogs also came to an end. This might not be the most troublesome villain in the Hellboy universe, but he surely has been pretty impactful. We are not enemies. We are bound together by fate. Not this crap again, lady. Some lessons bear repeating. Nimue, aka the Queen of Blood. This is one Kafkaesque villain from the era of King Arthur who is regarded as one of the greatest witches in Britain. She was the muse of Merlin, who confided in her all his secrets. However, Nimue used it to trap him in a grave forever. Without his guidance, she soon descended into madness, and her powers became deadlier due to her unpredictable nature. She was later killed by the other witches and chopped into pieces that were scattered all over the world. To ensure that she could not rejoin these pieces, they were locked up in wooden boxes and buried deep under the earth. In the Wild Hunt, Nimue was revived using the blood of innocent villagers. She exacted vengeance on the other witches and demanded an army that she could have at her command. From the Queen of the Witches, she became the Goddess of War. In the meantime, Hellboy gathered his own army with the help of the magical sword Excalibur. Later, Nimue is possessed by the Ogdru Jihad, who used her body to stage a comeback. She changes into a dragon-like beast, and the two armies face each other in a battle that would mark the end of the world. Hellboy manages to kill her, but she tears his heart and drags him to hell along with her. A fitting villain for a gallant hero, we must say. Hermann von Klempt a crazy scientist is a grave threat, and if he works for the Nazis, he is deadlier. Hermann von Klempt aided them on various schemes to destroy the world. He took a keen interest in cybernetics, and when he was only 10 years old, he performed experiments on the family cat after killing it. His family was wary of his vicious nature, and they were glad when he left home for higher studies. He became a part of the Sonnenrod Society and started off the Kriegoff Project. During one of the experiments, his body was blown off in an explosion and only his head remained alive. It was kept in a bell jar, but his evil mind was constantly at work. When Grigori Rasputin summoned the services of the Sonnenrod Society, Hermann von Klempt opposed the idea because he thought that Rasputin was nothing more than a fraud. He was part of the special program undertaken by the Nazis where they tried to establish contact with certain malevolent entities in space. Even after the Nazis lost to the Allied powers, Klempt survived and continued work in a secret base where he tried to use vampires to destroy the U.S. He was involved in several other storylines such as Wake the Devil, Conqueror Worm, and The Devil You Know. Ultimately, he was killed by Rasputin, but not before he had carved a special space for himself in the list of villains in the Hellboy universe. Jenny Greenteeth Sometimes the creators would draw inspirations from real-life folklore to create the monsters, and Jenny Greenteeth is one such example. She is a dreaded creature in English folklore, known for dragging children and the elderly into the waters to drown them. First appearing in the storyline titled The Corpse, her appearance was enough to send shivers down your spine. Greenish, decaying skin, long, stringy hair, spindly arms, and eerily dead eyes all made her menacing. Jenny Greenteeth was featured as a minor character, but the uniqueness of her appearance and mannerisms made us consider her seriously. We cannot get over the image of her nibbling on the arm of a corpse in the story. It was as gross as it was funny. When Hellboy comes to retrieve the arm, they face off, and the character is never seen again in subsequent Hellboy comics. The Conqueror Worm the horror legend Edgar Allan Poe inspired this antagonist as one of his poems featured a character of the same name. The Conqueror Worm was simply among the 369 Ogdru Hem, the children that spanned from the Ogdru Jihad. It all started during the Second World War when the Nazis were keen for a decisive victory and wanted the alliance of the malevolent entities in space. These space ghosts promised to help if a dead body was sent into space so that they could inhabit that and come to Earth. The Nazis attempted to send a corpse, but the plan was foiled and the body was never brought back. Many years later, when the body was finally brought back, the Conqueror Worm emerged. 
he had some special powers, such as transforming people into frog-like monsters by emitting a lethal gas. He continued growing in size and strength, and Hellboy realized that if he wasn't stopped, he would destroy all life forms on Earth. During the decisive fight with Hellboy, Rasputin tried to help the Conqueror Worm, but without the right hand of doom, he was helpless. Eventually, the Conqueror Worm was defeated by Hellboy. This is all the time we had for today's episode. We hope you guys liked it. It would be awesome if you guys can take some time to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to tell us which topic you want us to cover in the comment section. Have a fantastic day ahead and stay safe!